Wow, this is pretty interesting. So here in a conversation, lead conversation of the CEO to a group chat, the CEO admitted that they made a fatal mistake of not adding big screens, comfortable sofa, and a fridge into their vehicles. Now, this is pretty interesting because for a very long period of time, Niels was always very adamant on maintaining the fact that you shouldn't have rear screens in the car. And Neil has always been adamant about, you know, it's not good for eyes, you know, you, and also a passenger entertainment screen. You don't, re you shouldn't really have that as well. But what you're seeing is that the consumer behavior here in China, they really care about those screens, all right? Some people might not, but some people really do care about those screens. And, and it's very evident when you go into those shopping malls and you have neo vehicles, you got um, maybe a, a Li auto vehicle and you piss, people see the big screens, they're like, wow, that's, that's, that's huge, all right? That's like a TV. And Neo Seal has admitted that they were late to the party. Yeah, they, they admitted that. But then he said, of course, that means we got to go big or go home, right? So, of course, with Envo, they went big. And, of course, they got the biggest freezer slash fridge, freezer plus fridge ever in a car. You know, that, that massive behemoth, which is just absolutely nuts. That means you can really legitimately live in your Envo L60 and it's going to be perfect for camping and all that kind of great stuff and they did in indeed go big or go home with the Envo big screen in the front right massive screen they got a rear entertainment screen but it has always been a, a constant debate about you know like sticking with William Lee's own way of doing things which is of course you know, the right trajectory, but sometimes it deviates from into the wrong path, right? For example, evidently, you know, not having those big screens. And I know for a fact that a lot of upper management at NEO actually don't agree with this, right? A lot of upper management, they really want big screens. Some upper management have vocalized and said to William Lee that, hey, you know, we like the big screens, like, for example, on the BMW i7, the big massive screen that flips down. Some people really love it. And gradually you see that, uh, you know, Will and Lee has accepted the fact that, you know, even though I might not really want rear screens or big screens, and I want my kids to watch movies in the back, there is that massive demand for that. And, uh, you know, it's a great thing, and, and they eventually adopted these screens. And in the ET7, right, the executive version, it, it's got two big, massive rear screens. And of course, with the ET9, you know, big, massive screen in the middle, massive screens in the back as well. And uh, it's very evident that consumers might want something that you might not personally agree with. And I think that's a very good characteristic trait with uh, Will Lee that he's willing to listen and, and, and make changes according to what consumers want and what knee owners have reflected and wanted. But the biggest question is, is this, did this affect sales? And I want to say absolutely yes. If Neil had the same level of screens that its competitors had, all right, Neil would sell so much better. It would definitely sell so much better. The people that buy Neos right now, they understand the whole package, batter swap and everything. But to some lesser extent, they might not care so much about entertainment. And, you know, we've always made that excuse that, hey, we can always watch entertainment on our iPads. Or, you know, it's a vertical screen and you can make do with what you have. But... You know, there's still people that really want those big screens. And then also with the fridge, you know, we've always maintained that aspect that, hey, uh, if you're going to have a fridge in the car and you're not in the car, do you stop giving it electricity or do you keep on letting it drain power to keep the fridge on? But, of course, eventually, Ni also had a fridge in the ES8, right? Because, you know, it's a market trend. It's, a, it's what people want. Right? Everybody has it. It kind of looks bad if you don't have it. 
And of course, you know, identifying what the market needs and accurately, right, with uh, the envelope, honing in on everything that a family market needs and giving them exactly that, but to the, the next level, all right, go big or go home. And uh, it's really laid out the path for Envo to be really, really successful. And of course, this also means that going forward, we're not going to see that same level of mistake, right? And and I think, in my personal opinion, it was kind of unfortunate that when they launched the ET7, you know, by then the Model Y was already announced. By then, um, you know, there were already lots of cars with horizontal screens on the market and people have already given the feedback right neo first gen neo owners given the feedback that perhaps you know just one center screen and it's vertical isn't the ideal setup and they've given that feedback to neo but unfortunately they didn't implement it on nt 2.0 vehicles so all nt 2.0 vehicles still have vertical screens did this affect sales as a consumer, I would say definitely, all right, because a lot of people do care about screens. Even my wife, my wife says like, oh, you know, those screens, you know, they're really nice for watching TV and stuff. You know, what about your, your screen? You can't, even, you can't even watch anything on it while you're driving, right? So there's a big entertainment aspect of it uh, that's not there. And then you have the AR glasses, and people really pitch this as an alternative to those screens. You know, you have an AR glasses, you can use it, you can lie down and watch it. You don't, it's not a fixed screen. You can use it at home and everything. But in reality, you know, those glasses, first of all, you have to, it's, it doesn't come with the car. You have to pay extra to buy it. And also there's cable management issues. And uh, it's a great product nonetheless, but it's not a replacement for screens, right, at the end of the day. And uh, if you have multiple people that want to watch it, you know, it's not really feasible. And if you got a kid and you want to show them, show the kid a cartoon, it's not really feasible to get the kid to watch the AR glasses, to use the AR glasses. So it's very nice that they reflected on this mistake. And they're already making changes, right, with the Envo car. But what's even better is it shows that Neil is willing to realize the mistakes that they've made and make changes upon it and really make their products better and going forward you know uh, i think staying and doing what's right is important but also adding in aspects of what cus customers and consumers want and i think another very great example of this is uh just yesterday i got my car serviced because it's, uh, it's coming up approaching four years, all right? My car is almost four years old. And what I've noticed very different from this year and from before was that before they would charge your car up to 90%, charge it to full. But then this year they, had, they have a policy where they can only charge it up to 60%. And obviously it's to, you know, of course you still want to maintain that same level of service. You want to give customers electricity you want to make sure you wash the car which they did all that kind of great stuff but you don't want people to be fleecing and, and, and abusing these kind of great benefits so neil is stay on track to do what's right but making sure that um you know they're making adapt adaptations to make sure that they're doing everything uh, that people also like all right so i think it's a it's a pretty nice compromise uh, when I got my car serviced, and it was just a fantastic experience, to be honest. Um, they, they, someone came pick up my car and then drove it to the service center, fixed it up, and washed the car up, uh, did the service and everything, took photos of the car, even had a group chat, and they called me to ask if I have any other requests or any other repairs or anything like that or anything else I need to, needed to be uh, dealt with, and then and then uh, scheduled to return the car to me. All that great stuff, fantastic experience, and new service has always been top-notch, top of the line. So going forward, yeah, I mean, a lot of people say, fire the CEO, fire the CEO. You guys don't really understand that he's not perfect, 
right? But I think he's the right guy for the job, right? He maintains his vision. He has been adamant and a little bit stubborn in the past, but you're seeing that he's willing to adapt to changing market conditions to make the products more competitive, to make the products better. So I'm very confident with him. And uh, I think admitting a mistake is a very important thing, a very important quality. Most people are too, you know, they have too much pride to even admit a mistake. So I think this is very, very nice. All right, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.